Hi folks, Kevin here. Well, it's January 16th, 2018, and uh, this episode's gonna be another Ask Me Anything. And uh, it's long overdue, so let me get to the question. I got my little laptop here. So uh, Kazana wrote, so this question came in, question and comment came in four months ago, over four months ago. And Kazana uh, commented, hi Kevin, it's not my intent to be rude or critical, but I am observing an enormous amount of infrastructure for two people, and I'm not understanding your end goal. Is the work due to your environment, your financial security, where your interests lay, or is it a long-term project designed to benefit the community? I love your videos, your work ethics, the thought and research you put into everything you do, but I still haven't figured out the overall picture of what you are aiming for. I am left feeling I'm missing a bit part of the picture as every video I watch of you screams integrity, someone I would be proud to call a friend. Your beautiful prop property is certainly an education in what can be achieved in a difficult climate on top of a gravel pit. Just thought I would ask the question as in the past you've answered and given insight uh, I have valued. So wow thank you very much for the wonderful comment. I uh, sincerely appreciate your, your compliments and the uh, the depth and breadth of the question. It's so important and I've been thinking about how to answer this question or these questions uh, since the, the, the comment in question came in over four months ago and so I'm sorry it's taken me this long to actually uh, respond. Hopefully this will come through and I'll, and I'll post the video but I've actually been working on this uh, trying to create a slide presentation or a Camtasia video uh, with some animations and incorporating videos and doing multiple slides and it got too overwhelming and uh, so I thought I'd just sort of wing it like I do most videos despite working on this for so many hours over the last couple of weeks uh, so yes to just about every component of the question so I'm just gonna break a little bit of this down um, is this work due to your environment certainly yes all, all of the, the the design elements that we've incorporated into the various components of this oh, this rather complex homestead or sm uh, small-scale farm and ultimately um, an educational center is our ultimate goal but it, it's it is quite complex with so many buildings roadways uh, and the, the goals of decreasing our environmental impact and having a net beneficial impact for our environment in, in other words addressing greenhouse gas it isn't it's like a double-edged sword it's reducing the production of co2 and methane all of those and various other uh, components that, that contribute to global warming while at the same time being carbon farmers really taking active proactive way so that's why we switched to solar power that's why we were using super insulated homes to decrease the amount of energy necessary to maintain each of these buildings and all uh, and I don't want to go down too far but it's really the, the design elements and I'll probably uh, create a couple more videos in the future talking about what I believe are the best design practices or best design approaches as well as talking about good design aspects or de good design elements. I think I've covered a little bit, bit of this in, the, in previous videos. But so much of this has to do with our geographic location, our climate, uh, our sector analysis, the things that we talk about in permaculture. Uh, so the environment plays a great a great role in it what about our financial security yes so much of what we're doing here 
uh, is aimed at uh, our future, our quality of life, our, our not just our lifespan, our health span, as I've talked a little bit about in the past, uh, becoming more and more off-grid. Now, often people think about off-grid as being uh, whether your electrical system is grid-tied. But when I'm talking about off-grid, I'm really talking about multiple different components. You're, you're decreasing your uh, dependence on outside resources, whether it's your f food, your fuel, your fiber, your, your, your pharmacy, all of those various elements that we look at in permaculture but are key to good design. Uh, so there's, and when I talk about financial security, I should mention that, well, my belief is I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm both an optimist <laughs> and a pessimist, depending on, on how I'm designing things and how you see the property coming along over time. Uh, it isn't just on uh, becoming carbon farmers and decreasing our dependency on all these outside systems, but another beneficial aspect of decreasing our dependence on outside resources also is our ability to decrease the need for financial, uh, that one of those uh, nine forms of capital that I've talked about in the past. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're dependent on outside systems, we need the money to purchase all of the things that we need in life. And when we no longer have those, uh, those needs for outside resources, our financial reserves, our, our financial capital, our liquid funds, uh, the needs aren't quite as great. And especially when you're getting to our ages, we're in our 60s now and uh, uh, Thea is going to be retiring in a few years. Um, so I'll go into the, more of that if there is interest in, that, in, that, uh, in those elements as well in the future. But yes, our financial security uh, is very much uh, reflected in how we're investing our, our, our investments. Instead of putting more money into a 401k, an IRA, uh, independent investment accounts uh, and all, we're investing in, in things that are giving us uh, rewards right now. So they're uh, generative investments as opposed, and I've talked before about degenerative investments, generative investments, and, and certainly regenerative investments. So enough of that. Uh, and these are where our, uh, both the and I are both uh, nature-loving, uh, earth, we really like earthy elements, like this post and beam home, and you can see a couple of the posts here, There's, those are six by six hemlock, the wall boards are one by six hemlock and uh, wood, and they were all locally harvested uh, in this area when we build our house. So, um, look and you'll see around the property, we use lots of, uh, raw materials that come from the earth and everything that we're, we're designing and building. So certainly our desire is to be more earth friendly, but it also gives us great um, satisfaction. Often people when they come here, you know, we've had people say, can we have our wedding here? <laughs> uh, you should open this up as a bread and, bed and breakfast, have people come and stay here. It's such a peaceful and serene uh, location. So, well, that all comes from uh, years ago in practice, I would go uh, to different conferences or uh, get invited to, uh, to various uh, manufacturers that, uh, that would produce medical supplies or pharmaceuticals, and they'd put me up in great hotels and, and, and various locations, and I would notice things that I thought were actually wonderful, some of the water features, uh, some of the statues and some of those things are things that we invested in here and those are for our own um, uh, creating a the ultimate vacation site at our own home because we're pretty much homebodies as well so it also yeah, yes it does ha have to go where our personal interests lie uh, and will this benefit the community we're hoping that it does, uh, ultimately, uh, one, the, the largest building on site. 
my, my, my goals over years have been to remodel that barn into, uh, in workshop areas, into a full-fledged educational facility. So another uh, element that's, that's, um, that I haven't really shared with people on YouTube yet uh, is our, um, our automation. Uh, so we've been smart home enthusiasts for years. Thea not so much uh, since the Amazon Echo uh, has, has gained popularity as sold on Amazon and Google Home now and other other systems it's it's made things much easier for someone who really isn't uh, interested at all in opening up an app on the phone and hitting buttons so for years you I, I, I've been able to have it in our home uh, you click open an app and then voice control things well that was too too many stuff steps and as I've become more aware of you know the best design elements, the more simplistic uh, the user interface is. And my wife is Thea is is an excellent example. She doesn't want to be touching anything, but if I say uh, you know Amazon Echo, I won't say her name right now because we got a device right near us. Uh, turn on the stained glass lights. All of the stained glass lights will go on in in, in the uh, throughout the house. So that's a user interface that, uh, that Thea really uh, can work with. It's very comfortable. She doesn't want to be bothered with, with uh, doing all of the other elements. I'm at the other end of the spectrum. I like seeing what I can do with taking all these various components, like this aquarium behind me. Now I've got the circulation off right now because the motors make noises. But in that environment, we're measuring a whole variety, not just the temperature of the water or the flow rate of the water. We're, we're measuring the total dissolved sol solids, the carbon dioxide, and various elements so that we're creating the uh, optimal environment and, the, and we're meeting the needs of the microbiome within the living rock. So that rock is just loaded with microorganisms like our digestive system or the soil that we grow the plants in. And so, and in the home, and you've seen in our passive solar home videos we've created in the past, and talking about thermal mass and all, you know that there's temperature readings down below the floor uh, in every room in the house, so we know what the, what the airflow is, what the temperature, what the humidity is in all locations. So we've got years and years of data, and that data is of no value unless you have a way of taking that data and processing it in such a way that it can, that it can uh, yield some intelligent information of, well, what does this data tell us about the design of the house, the efficiency of the house? What can possibly Im be improved? And so we can, and we also use some other techniques as well. So without going too much into that, now getting in, into craziness, uh, with my desires with, with uh, smart home technology. Where I'm going next is integrating into smart farm technology, using information. So like we have the weather stations outside and we're able to actually see the differences in the microclimates in our kitchen garden versus around the other garden areas, around the greenhouses as well. And we're seeing just how structures actually not just affect what you could capture with a, with a video recorder or, or, or a photograph, and you can see how the strong, cold, westerly winds create drifts in certain locations. Well, that's more simplistic. We can actually look at now how we can actually create the, the snow pattern, control the microclimates, by using various, you know, uh, let's say our snow fences. So if we don't want a huge deposit of snow right at the place that we put up a snow fence, we want to raise that fence up off the ground, we want it at least six inches off the ground. And in this area, we want it a good foot off the ground because we get such heavy lake effect snows. We would don't want it to be a solid fence because that way we can distribute the snow evenly and we can determine, geez, if we have a hundred foot span before our driveway is, well, then we can do it. Like we just had a two foot uh, snowfall with very minimal winds, just two mile per hour winds. 
and our driveway only got six inches deep and four inches deep in some locations around the crown of the road but off the sides 24 foot wide driveway it, it only got to about you know four inches deep however uh, in lo other locations on the property where we didn't put the, the the design the fencing and all the snow the snow was over two feet deep probably around 28 30 inches deep so that decreased the the energy consumption needed or the urgency to get out and, and snow blow the the driveway because of how we design the system and that's based on some of it's dumb luck uh, when I first started uh, putting in the system, but it's been measuring the effects of various modifications. And I've been putting in hugel culture uh, uh, mounds near the fences uh, that, are, that are there to help utilize, so can we put fences that go right down to the ground? So now I'm getting just too crazy with this, but there's so many things we can do with, us, with our Let's say our user interface is one thing, so they make it very simplistic for people to get assisted living uh, abilities on your home, your homestead, your farm, and all. We're rapidly uh, moving towards a, 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 a more intelligent living and working environment. So that's another key element of, of what we're doing. So. One of the things that's made it difficult for me to ultimately get to, to answering this besides me creating 38 slides and, and thinking about how I'm going to make this all make sense, uh, one of the things that's, that's challenging is, well, Thea and I are both, you know, we're both looking at, well, when is Thea going to retire? And all of this building and all that we're doing is only capable because Thea is still working. Uh, and we have to account for, all right, our vehicles are 15 years old, you know, all of those things, and so we have breakdowns, and the washing machine's gonna break down, the dishwasher breaks down, a freezer breaks down. So we do have to have some financial reserves in order to do these things, so we have to think about, huh, what sort of future expenditures, where do we wanna go, how important is this? So I guess as far as how we're gonna reach the community, Certainly my goal is to get better at this YouTube thing and uh, try to be more consistent like I was uh, beginning uh, last early spring and all. Uh, and try to, get, try to share information that's meaningful. And I I'm, I'm still haven't figured out how to do that. And I don't have a location. I'm coming down here in the den area here and trying to uh, shut things down so it's quiet enough. Uh, to do a video like this. But will that educational facility ever get built? I, you know, I, I don't know yet. Uh, there's many things that are, that are in the uh, potential, uh, what I call my, our heirloom legacy uh, that we want to leave. Um, so I do want to share with communities, so for now my goal is to try and share as much as I can with a YouTube community and hopefully respond more timely and responsibly to the comments and questions that come up. So folks, uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to, uh, to view the video and uh, please like it if you think it's of value. Uh, to let me know, leave a comment, ask questions. I'm going to try and be more responsive here in the in the near future uh, to answering a lot of these uh, questions and certainly responding to some of the comments. There's been some really good ones lately. And um, but again, Kazana, I'm really apologize. This has been such a, a wonderful wonderful compliments and very. Uh, very thoughtful questions where I haven't really addressed those those questions appropriately. I hope this gives some insight. Uh, give me a holler back and a, and a comment below. Let me know what it is that, that I can do to help clarify other elements or that, that I haven't covered 
or to expand on some of the elements that I've, I've mentioned in this video. Well, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a fantastic day, folks. Feel free to leave a comment, ask a question, and share it with your friends. Bye-bye now. Thank you.